Hi, Gary Stearman. It's Monday, the 5th of March. Let's talk today about atheism and agnosticism and the current debate on atheism and agnosticism uh, that has been stimulated out of England. Now, England is essentially a, an agnostic state, although it still has a, an Archbishop of Canterbury. It still has uh, the Anglican Church. Uh, the man on the street in England really doesn't care all that much about Christianity or religion at all. A uh, man on the street in, in England is basically preoccupied with getting on with the daily events of life. However, a, a recent debate may have changed the conversation somewhat. Dateline 24 February uh, of this year, uh, we have here from the London Telegraph uh, an article that begins, He told the Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr. Rowan Williams, that he preferred to call himself an agnostic rather than an atheist. The two men were taking part in a public dialogue at Oxford University at the end of a week which has seen bitter debate about the role of religion in public life in Britain. So the subject has arisen. And by the way, parenthetically, I might say, let's just pray that for the sake of England, uh, this, this conversation continues because England has, has turned away from God and has become essentially an agnostic state and it is not doing them one bit of good. Essentially, they have deprived themselves of the Lord's blessing. But the debate uh, here at, at uh, Oxford University was between the primate of the Anglican religion, Rowan Williams, and perhaps the world's best known and most outspoken atheist, Richard Dawkins, who is the foremost proponent of Darwinism, I suppose, that there is in the world. <clears throat> and he argues vehemently that life arose essentially out of a chemical substrate on its own without any divine direction. That's been Dawkins' position. But uh, during this, this dialogue with uh, Dr. Rowan Williams, he uh, revealed suddenly that he prefers to call himself an agnostic rather than an atheist. What's the difference between an agnostic and an atheist? Well, uh, atheos in Greek, you put it together, uh, and it says atheist. A meaning without, theos, God. Uh, atheos, atheist, without God. Agnostic, on the other hand, comes from two Greek words, a, kenosis. A, without, and kenosis, knowing. So... <laughs> An agnostic is without knowledge. That is, he, he can't say one way or another. An atheist is without God. You know, it's kind of fascinating to me, always has been, that if you translate agnosis into Latin, it becomes ignoramus, <laughs> which, by the way, is an English word, ignoramus. But essentially it means I don't know. So a, an atheist says, I do know, there's no God. An agnostic says, I'm not sure, there may be a God, maybe not. But for Richard Dawkins to come out and say that he's an agnostic, wow. <clears throat> maybe we should pray for Richard Dawkins. Uh, as this uh, debate continued, and I'll read on, last week uh, a... Tory party chairman, the Baroness Warsi, uh, in England warned of a tide of militant secularism challenging the famous religious foundations of British society. And so in Parliament, they're making speeches about religion. Uh, uh, Christianity is becoming a public dialogue in England. <clears throat> Dr. Williams replied that he entirely agreed with the beauty of of Professor Dawkins' argument, but he added, I'm not talking about God as an extra who you shoehorn on to that. In other words, uh, for the Archbishop of uh, Canterbury, God is at the center of things rather than the edge of things. And for uh, Dawkins, God is on the edge rather than in the center. There was surprise when Professor Dawkins acknowledged that he was less than 100% certain of his conviction that there is no creator. The philosopher Sir Anthony Kenny, who chaired this discussion, and interjected, uh, why don't you call yourself an agnostic? Professor, Professor Dawkins answered, 
I do. An incredulous Sir Anthony replied, but you're described as the world's most famous atheist. <clears throat> Professor Dawkins then said, well, I'm about a 6.9 out of 7 when it comes to being sure of my belief. So uh, here the, the world's foremost atheist is a 6.9 out of 7 atheist. Not quite all the way atheistic. I have said for years, <laughs> and I don't plan on changing my mind, that you couldn't be an atheist if there were no God. And if you stop and think about it, atheism involves setting yourself against the general, uh, generally accepted concept that a God is responsible for the creation. An atheist must come along and react against that and say, no, I don't believe that. I'm against that. I am an atheist. That is, I'm without God. <clears throat> and Professor Dawkins is now 6.9 out of 7, sure of his beliefs. Uh, he's waffling. Tenth of a point. I don't know. He says, quote, I think the probability of a supernatural creator existing is very low. He also said that he believed it was highly likely that there was life on other planets. Of course, we could go into the discussion of how it got there, <clears throat> if there is life on other planets. For him, it, it would be the product of evolution, I'm sure. At one point, says this article, he discussed uh, the discussion uh, strayed onto the theoretical question um, of whether uh, a traditional cutthroat razor could be described as a more complicated thing than an electric shaver. <laughs> if you can can imagine this image, you know, they, they, the argument came down to the point of uh, the, a good old-fashioned straight razor, which is efficient at removing whiskers, a, and whether or not an electric razor might be a, a, a bit higher on the evolutionary scale than a common uh, razor, straight razor. That was the level of the discussion between uh, Richard Dawkins in a meeting uh, that involved other uh, personalities and intellects chaired by uh, the Anglican Archbishop. It came down to a discussion of the relative complexity of razors. During a wide-ranging discussion, the Archbishops also said that he believed that human beings had evolved from non-human ancestors, but were nevertheless in the image of God. He also said that the explanation for the creation of the world in the book of Genesis could not be taken literally. That's the Archbishop of Canterbury. The writers of the Bible, inspired as I believe they were, uh, they were nonetheless not inspired to do 21st century physics, he said. When Professor Dawkins suggested that he believed the Pope took a rather uh, more uh, literal interpretation of the origin of humans, the Archbishop joked, I'll ask him sometime <clears throat> if we should ever run across each other. Well, what a conversation between intellects, the highest intellects. Richard Dawkins is a noteworthy scientist. The Archb Archbishop of Canterbury is a man who must have studied theology and religious history. And it comes down to a discussion of the complexity of razors on the evolutionary scale. Which takes me to Psalm 14, verse 1. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of man to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. And that's pretty much God's opinion of the man who ignores him. Uh, he would refer to himself as an atheist, an atheist, or an agnostic, an agnostic. But God says he's a fool. And the discussion rages on as men prepare to destroy themselves on the field of battle. Something to think about on this Monday. Hmm. We're looking. We're watching. Hope you're watching, too. 
Remember, keep looking up.